little roadies. Well, today is like a smorgasbord of the full meal deal. So you're going to want to stay till the end. I did this last week, go to the Portland Quilt and Craft Festival at the Expo Center here in Portland, Oregon. So you want to stay till the end because I um, took some video there and um, G is putting some of the quilts that he instructed me how to do this, you know, because he didn't want to go to the show. So I had to do the camera by myself, which is always <sighs> scary. So please forgive any, um, uh, take some Dramamine. <laughs> yeah, take some Dramamine. But that will be at the end. Um, I did intend to, well, I had to go by myself because the person I went with last year, Cheryl, stitching with the Sisterlies, uh, wasn't able to go. And so I kind of had talked myself out of it. I'm not going to go. And then G started talking about, you're going to have FOMO. And he didn't use the term FOMO. <laughs> he doesn't even know what that means. <laughs> but... Um, he said, you're, you're going to regret it, and you'll see people there you know, which I did, and hi to all of those who said hi to me. And um, so here's how I approached it. I have been um, de-stashing the uh, beehive, reorganizing. It looks like a junk store right now. Uh, and so I said, okay, I'm going to go. I'm going to go to share what was there with all of you. But I am not going to buy a thing. Um, because I've been digging through, as you will see, I've been digging through stuff and going, oh, I want to make that. I want to make that. I walked in, and the first booth I bought something. I know. No willpower absolutely none yeah but it was really fabulous so as I said stay tuned to the end so you can see all of that fun and beautifulness there uh, also just a little homework here I have noticed that and there's a way to automatically tell who's subscribed and who's not and as you will see we watch RV videos during happy hour and they are all complaining about how subscribers are getting kicked off and who knows why that is I have my suspicions but I really don't know uh, but what I would ask of you is to just go ahead and hit the subscribe button whether you think, oh no, I'm already subscribed or not. And since you're sliding over to that side, just hit the thumbs up. Or the thumbs down, it doesn't matter. Well, I have started. Um, I'm going to be starting. As you can see here, we are doing January, February, March, April's is the little bunny. And so he is the next... Next little block with Kathy Schmidt's um, stitch along. And you're going to want to go, if you're doing this, you'll want to also watch her YouTube video. Because I've embroidered for quite a long time. I, I loved embroidery from when I started quilting, which was in the 90s. I was a little late to the, to the game. But I, I like all those embroidery people. Um, the Raspberry Rabbit, um, Gail Pan, uh, Kathy Schmitz. I, I just love them all. Um, but this particular project comes in three colors on Spoonflower. And she puts out a YouTube channel on how she embroiders each block. So each month there's a new uh, YouTube video. And I decided to watch it in the last block to see how she stitched the bee. And I learned something. You think you've got it all up here, but in reality, um, there's always something to learn. And isn't that the best part? So um, if you're interested in doing that, it, the uh, panels are on Spoonflower. And doing only one motif a month makes it all chill. It's just so 
so awesome. Okay, what next? I got the binding on the dorm quilt and I will be taking that to retreat. I'm going to be going to the Fabric Stalkers retreat. We rented a house down near Sun River, Oregon, and we just um, stitched for four or five days. Um, I am, because I'm down there when my stitch group in Sisters meets, I am going to play hooky from Sun River and head up to Sisters and visit with my quilt group there. And um, so it's going to be uh, a week of really fun connecting up with friends, and I am really looking forward to it. This morning, I watched a live with Giuseppe and uh, on Instagram, and it was so fun because he's going to be at Quilter's Affair again, and he was also chosen to um, be part of the residency program, which is this really, really fascinating program that Kathy Degendorfer at Pine Meadow Ranch set up for artists to spend a month just relaxing and enjoying and challenging themselves in their art without any outside distraction. What a gift. It is absolutely a gift. It's called the Roundhouse, which was only like over the cross the fence from where I used to live in Sisters. So I, I, I feel for him uh, juicy juice uh, for being able to enjoy that. Yes. Well, the reason I um, said I wasn't going to buy anything, oh, and let me just say this before I forget. I am going to do not a tutorial, but I'm just going to show you how I prep my wool. Um, I found a project as I was going through the closet in here. I found a project that just screamed for me to prep and get ready for retreat because it was a um, 4th of July project. And I thought, oh, I could get ahead of the game. Um, it wasn't complicated. It was something that was really doable and maybe I could finish it before 4th of July. It's uh, pillows so they can go on my... Um, church pew that's sitting on the inside of the front door. But what did I do this week? Okay, first of all, I finished the next block of our block of the month, which uh, for those of you who are um, joining, and you can join anytime. This is like a no stress block of the month. But the book is available at the Fat Quarter Shop, and it is Cream and Sugar. This used to be a block of the month back, I think, in 2014, and it was done with these particular fabrics, which um, I'm thinking that all of these fabrics... See, now my brain did a... Um, did a... Um, what in our family calls, uh, uh, oh yeah, okay, I don't have to say that word. Um, edit to Sitar's laundry basket uh, fabrics for Andover fabrics. So, you know, if you have these or you bought this back in the day and you haven't done it, now would be the time to dig it out. But for me, I didn't buy this kit. Um, but I picked up the, oh, this was in 2019. I did pick up this book, and I thought, I am going to do it out of other fabrics and just make it totally scrappy. So the fabrics I picked were a lot of Joe Morton's fabrics, because I love her fabrics. They, back in the day, were called Reproduction 1800s and Civil War fabrics. And I just have a box of them, because I love them. And I have started just doing scrappy with using this book and that pile of fabrics. I'm in love. 
and I'm only doing one block a month. Now each block that you do in this book makes two blocks, so I now have four blocks for two months of work. I know I'm going to use this book again and again. Yes, there are ways to um, bulk cut chain piece to make these blocks faster, but this was set up like a block of the month, which means that you are doing a step-by-step -step creating a block, which is a totally different way of approaching a quilt than chain piecing away and, and getting all the blocks done at one time. I am enjoying this process because it is slowing everything down. I actually have to read directions, which I don't. That's one of the issues that I have. I don't read directions. Afterwards, I go, uh-oh, boo-boo. Um, but this block of the month, by the way I'm approaching it, is allowing me to slow down, to process information differently, which with my aging brain, I think is actually helping me. Um, so I'm just, I, you know, I'm standing on a box preaching here. But so just to remind you, <clears throat> this was block one. So I have two of these. And then for April, I did block two, and I have two of these. So you can see by choosing a complementary fabric line or type of fabric, these can be done in brights, in, in solids, in uh, variations of blue, anything you want. But when it comes together, it's going to be an awesome quilt. And I'm really excited. So for those of you that want to jump on board, just go to the Fat Quarter Shop and get that book. And then dream. Dream about. And there's no rush to catch up. Just start with the next month. So in May, it's whatever uh, block three is. So let me just look at block three. Just so I can get a little bit excited about block three. Let's see. Grandmother's Choice block was uh, that last block, and the next one is Hourglass block. So it's that one. Going to be fun. I wonder if I have some that I can fussy cut. Hmm. Possibilities. So I got that going. I told you about Kathy Schmidt's thing that I have going. And I know that I have shared that in this particular quilt retreat that I am going to be doing handwork. I am not bringing my sewing machine. And I know several of you have warned me that in the past I was not happy when I did that. But the reality of my world is that 80% of my life is handwork. And handwork takes some dedication and consistency and not forgetting and takes longer. So to take five days and do a variety of different handwork I think will be calming to my soul. I think it will. I think it will. Because I have found some things that um, I was like, oh, I totally forgot about that. So in a few minutes, I will show you how I prep my wool. Uh, it's very simple. I am like, uh, I don't follow the rules. I don't follow the rules. Don't tell Sister Theodosia. Oh, I think she might be dead. She was old when I was in the second grade. Yeah, okay, I feel a little bitter. <laughs> Before we get on to that, I just wanted to share this little thing. I'm a little bit, I had a cup of coffee. That's what's going on here. Have you ever seen this? This was a gift idea from a quilter that I used to quilt with back in the 90s. And 
she said, you should save all the, you know, the half square triangles and the uh, flying geese and all that where you cut off the little corner to, when you trim up? She says, put that into a jar. It's called goose jelly. I was like, she's pulling my leg, right? She's pulling my leg. But no, um, I started, I got this old antique jar, and I started saving all the corners that I cut off. And I put them in this jar every time. So this sits on the shelf, and I can see how, look at all of the quilts that I have made. And although I'm not a canning person, I don't can things, I made goose jelly. And so when I made the blocks for the block of the month, uh, cream and sugar, I put those on top. So they're the very new, newest jelly to be added. I just thought this was a fun thing, and I've had this since the 90s, so there are a ton. I'm, I'm getting close to maybe needing another jar. Yeah. Okay, let me think about, let me just take a break and talk to you about books. I, at the end of last year, looked out when I was in Barnes & Noble, and they were giving away um, my book journal books for free when you bought a certain amount. And I had been sh uh, Christmas shopping at Barnes & Noble. Um, my favorite, I have to say though, my favorite bookstore was Powell's in downtown Portland, but I rarely, I haven't been down there in ages. Um, but here's the book journal. So in here I write down every book I read, it asks for the publisher, um, the author, when it, whether it was fiction or nonfiction, where I got it from, and a, a short synopsis, and on a scale of five stars, what I thought about it. So it's kind of fun to go back and see what I have read. And it's a good thing I write... Um, down a little synopsis because sometimes I am a prolific reader and sometimes I forget what um, what a book is about. So a friend of mine from the Mountain Stitchers, which is very exciting, we meet tomorrow, uh, lent me this book. It's a must read book. It's a must read book. It, it's actually rarely in a book do I cry? And I cried. It's um, it's such a book, and um, and you know he was the author of the Stranger in the Lifeboat, which many of you've read. Uh, so I recommend that book. I also, uh, while I was at Barnes and Noble, and I picked up this journal. Isn't it gorgeous? There was a whole pile of these for sale different covers for seven bucks blank because in the current book that I just finished called What Happened to You by uh, Dr. Perry and Oprah Winfrey I my my wish for the world is that everybody in the world read at least the last chapter 9 and 10 uh, it made so much sense to our world but my daughter-in-law, my younger daughter-in-law, told me, you need to be writing your stories down. You know, you need to be writing them down. And so many memories are kind of vague or, or something will happen that will trigger, oh, a memory. And so I'm going to write, this is going to be my memory book. But it won't be in chronological order. It'll be written as whatever that moment is that I remember the story because I don't I can't tell you my dad died young um, and my mother was my mother <laughs> and I didn't have uh, I heard little snippets but not not answers to those deep questions I wish I had and when I discovered that box uh, 
when I was going through that box last week of my dad's and I found that sweet little, um, I don't know where I put it here, um, that sweet little card he made his father back in 1936, I wish I could have had a conversation, but I just had gotten married. I was like young in love, totally about myself, and never got the opportunity to ask my dad the stories. So that's what I'm going to do in this. Okay. Now, what has happened this week? This week, I was going through stuff. I was looking for something specific. I can't even remember what specifically I was looking for, but I was looking for something specific. And I found a whole bunch of projects that I loved. I mean, I'm telling you, I loved them. And then I brought them into my sewing room and I forgot them. I tell you. This particular I uh, this particular kit I bought I bought it as a kit. So it came with the embroidery, the the background fabric and the what do you call that? The trim and the binding fabric. It came in a kit. And it doesn't look like much. As happens to us frequently, as we see something, it you're not falling in love with it. But when you see a sample of it, you can't stop looking at it. And I was at, I can't even remember which quilt show I was at, but the vendor mall, we walked three times by this particular booth, and each time I thought, oh, I just love that. I just love that. And I didn't buy it. And then the third time, I thought, okay, I'm going to regret it. I can tell I'm going to regret it. So I purchased the kit. This was several years ago. Got in the bucket with a lot of other kits. But here it is. It's Liberty Homestead Farmhouse Quilts. It's a little wall hanging. So I decided, rather than tracing out the pattern onto my background fabric with a Pigma uh, 0.01 pen, is what I usually do with the light box, I decided I have a, I still have like two packs of transferees, which was a product that was really innovative when it first came out and still is liked by a lot of people. But I since have transitioned away from it and I said I'm not going to waste this transferees. So I decided to do this project with the transferees. When I opened this, I got confused because I said there was only three blocks. And there's six blocks in this quilt. And then I realized that they actually did one block twice. And so I thought to myself, self, you're not going to like embroidering the same block twice. So I decided that what I'm going to make is a three block long wall hanging and only embroider one block one time. Does that make sense? <laughs> it made total sense to me, let me tell you. So the thing about transferees is it's a, a webbing paper that uh, comes in a pack and it has freezer paper on the background. And what I do before I print it out, because you want it printed out on the fabric side of it, is that I put an X on printer paper and then I put the um, piece of paper with the art on it in the printer and I print it. And yes, I had it, uh, the paper upside down. So then I know how I'm supposed to feed this transferees into my printer so it prints on the correct side. And so I printed three the three motifs, see, there's one, on this transferees. So how this works is that you peel 
this paper off from the the fabric. I don't have very long fingernails, so there it comes. You, you see, you peel it like that. And when you get this peeled off, you stick it onto your fabric, and then you embroider it. You want to use color fast floss, so DMCs, and that's what they uh, that's what they included in the kit was DMCs. So you know that's not going to bleed because you do have to get this wet to melt this off. But it takes two seconds to print out your pattern and be ready to start. So there is an advantage to that. I do n remember that when you get this wet and you're c trying to get rid of the fabric, it's kind of gummy, so you just kind of have to rub it gently and get it all off, and then you have to dry it. But yes, I'm taking this to retreat with me. The next thing that I wanted to share was I belong to a wool applique group that is a men, uh, the moderator is Julie Cusave, who is a, a she um, moderates more than one group on Facebook, and bless her heart, um, it creates a space where we, um, when you love a certain genre, you can just hang out there. And there was a piece that someone was working on that blew everybody's mind. Everybody wanted it. I wanted it. Um, and it turned out that the designer of it, it was a pattern that was no longer available or wasn't available, um, re-released it as a pattern that we all could buy. And so I immediately um, downloaded a PDF and it's called Peace, Hope, and Joy, designed by Lucinda Shattuck. And oh, I'm going to make it into a pillow for my bench. I absolutely love it. Yeah. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. So that's on my my list. <laughs> okay. So before we go over to the um, cutting table where I set up to uh, film uh, how I just a step by step. I'm not actually doing it. I'm just going to do step by step what um, I do to. Um, prep my wool. I did want to show you a couple of other things. So I told you that I got done with the dorm quilt. Well, a week and a half ago, it totally escaped me that in my family I have another college-bound senior. So I decided I better get on the bandwagon and make a second dorm quilt. And I decided on this fabric because the, a lot of the colleges this college uh, high school student applied to are near the ocean. And Fat Quarter had this um, Ocean Moda Mix Fat Quarter bundle. And I... I I mean, for a lot of these types of quilts, like the block of the month is out of, is totally scrappy out of my uh, reproduction fabrics. But a lot of times when I want to do a quilt that is faster in cutting and piecing, and I want the fabrics to look good together all at once and not have to um, it's my fast food quilt as opposed to my home cooked meal. Okay, so the block of the month uh, that we're working on, cream and sugar, is like my home cooked meal. 
I need all the right ingredients, I want to take time. But for a dorm quilt, I want a fast food quilt. And that means that the fabrics are already curated in a nice bundle together. And so all I have to do is figure out the quilt pattern I want to use and start cutting and piecing. It's two different uh, processes. And so I saw this all together. Isn't that lovely? This is Fat Quarter Shop's um, Ocean Moda Mix. And I think it's going to be perfect for that college bound senior. So, yeah. When I get back from retreat, we shall be working on this one. And I think I am going to use the same quilt pattern that I used for that one because, but all I have to get is the cream, the cream colored fabric, because this really went together well. I mean, it was fun to cut. It was fun to piece. I could actually watch some YouTube channels while I was piecing because it didn't require me to, which always is a challenge for me, is to stay on task. So that was fun. Okay. What happened? What happened at... I wasn't, I wasn't horribly bad, but what happened at the Portland Craft Expo, Quilt and Craft Expo, it was lovely. It was, the energy was, it was packed, and the energy was sometimes, and G was absolutely right. I had talked myself out of it, and I was going to hunker down in the beehive, make some progress on things. But sometimes you make better progress when you get energized. And that definitely was energizing. And so, um, I did not intend to buy anything. I mean, I had just, I told myself, my mantra was, you're not going to buy anything. I literally took two steps, took two steps in. Of course, they put the Carriage Country Quilts booth right at the beginning, and that booth totally speaks to me. I mean, I have to not look, not look, but I could not. It's like, you know, it's like the, the ambulance chasing in the quilting world. You can't not look look. First booth stopped and I saw this. This photograph is not going to do it justice, but it was absolutely adorable and I want to make it for my ocean bedroom. I have, uh, I think I've told you this before, uh, the kids bedroom, when the grandkids come over, they stay in the guest room that is all basically ocean themed. And um, it's like an ode to my growing up years on the ocean and my parents and, you know, it just makes me feel good. My heart is, a, is on the ocean. Love made me move inland. <laughs> so, um, the quilt that's hanging up there is a Charlie Harper quilt. And um, I sometimes hang that in the front entry. So I want to take that down and put up an ocean themed quilt. And this is adorable. It's called Seascape Carriage Country Quilts. And they're in Des Moines, Washington. And they also have a Facebook presence. And so here it is. You see the whale and the octopus and the crab and the seahorse. Oh, and, and look at all of that wool in there. It's, it even has the binding fabric. So yeah, I didn't get far. Two steps and I'm done. Then I walked all around, talked to different people that I ran into, um, took a little video and some photographs of quilts, and 
came around the corner on another aisle and ran into a embroidery group, uh, a booth. And um, I had never seen them. A lot of these vendors are vendors you see at, at different shows, but this particular one I hadn't seen before, and they're called Edmar. Uh, leaders in leaders in dimensional embroidery and they also have a website and they have I believe she said there's a Facebook not a Facebook yeah they're on Instagram and they have a YouTube uh, that does instructional embroidery um, videos and you I took some close-up of the th the threads and everything are just awesome. But these particular kits were already pre-printed on cotton. And um, the threads and the needles you would need for this embroidery are included in the kit. And I thought this would be either a beautiful wedding gift or an anniversary gift. And this is the kit here. So it's done with um, bullion stitches and cast on stitches and it's pre-printed and that washes away with cold water and all the threads are on there. Um, it's called the wedding wreath uh, full kit. It's, this picture does not do it justice. I mean, I wish the sheen on this thread was unbelievable. So yeah, that was that was it. And then let me just see where where where. Hold on one second. Just take a look at the mess over here. I, um, so the kit, let's see here, the kit I started working on was this one here, and it is a, um, 1894 Cottonwood House Keeper of the Old, and this was another one I found in this, in the beehive closet, and so, I prepped it. I prepped it. Uh, this is going to be a big pillow. I put Pellon SF 101 on the back and then the kit came with the white wool and I uh, traced that, cut out the pieces, fused them onto the background and now I have to stitch them. And in the instructions, it says very specifically to use a finer thread to stitch because these are silhouettes. And they have a lot of fiddly stuff. And so, um, not to pull your thread really tightly. So I was really excited to get this one ready. This is going to retreat with me. But when I was at, um, what did I do with the pattern? Oh, right here. Um, when I was at the craft fair uh, and quilt show yesterday, I saw, I wanted to find a piece of that red wool for the July 4th pillow. And that pillow had um, already some stitching on it and not wanting, I think it came that way, but not wanting to do any stitching on the background, I thought, oh, I'm going to try to find a piece of red wool that has some texture to it for this particular pillow. And I found this, you can see it there, at the same booth as I got the, the little ocean, you know, carriage house is where I got this piece. It's absolutely gorgeous. So that's what I'm going to just talk you through back here on how I prepped that. And lastly, before we start that, I want to show you this. I went to Pioneer Quilts in Portland for Wooly Wednesday. That is our once a month. Um, we get together, we stitch, we talk, we encourage, we, yeah. 
all the things. And one of the gals brought a tote that she had everything in, all her equipment in for her little stitching that she was doing. And we were all looking at that going, where'd you get that? We want that. You know how you do when you see stuff. She got it off of Amazon and it's actually a diaper tote. So I ordered it that day and it came. So here it is. It came like this. And so I'm going to just show you. So here it is. It's out of felted wool. So it's got to relax a little bit. But here it is. So she just carried this thing in. Look at zippered pocket on the end. And then a full box where you could put your project and um, handles and Oh, this, oh, this goes inside. Oh, and it has pockets all along here. And then, let me just do this. This is just the way. I just thought it was the cleverest thing. And it, I think it was like $12 or something like that. It was like, okay, let's see. Oh, oh. we're wrestling here. Okay. So this, does this go away? Oh, I see how this is. Okay, so this Velcro, you Velcro that together. You Velcro this together. Okay. And then this goes in here. That. Okay. Oh my gosh, this is so great. This is so great. Okay. So here it is. Once it relaxes a little better, it'll be... So here, it's just got two handles. Got a zippered pocket there. And then look at it, it's divided inside. And you can decorate it. Oh, and there's three pockets on the outside. And she just kind of walked in all, like, no problem in the world, and walked in and set this thing down and started stitching. Yeah. Well, now we all get to look cool. I think it was $12. I mean, you couldn't beat it on Amazon. Okay, I'm going to stop the camera and relocate to the cutting table. Okay, a little different angle, but let me tell you what's going on. So this is how I prep my wool. Um, the other project that I did, this particular one, this is another way to do it, is I actually put the pattern up to a window to be able to see the lines and trace it onto my fusible. But most often, because at my age I don't have the neck shoulder or back ability to constantly be tracing at a window, I use my miso table, which has been my go-to table for years, I mean decades. So this is a simple plastic table that is made by the miso company, and the reason I like it is when I put it on my cutting table, it raises the surface, and so I'm not bending over at all. And then you get this, this portable light thing and I got this at let's see I got this at like Home Depot and you stick it under there and when you turn it on voila yes so I have the pattern what you have to pay attention to with um, with wool patterns is that some of the designers, and this is an old pattern, so it was not the standard of patterns back in the day, is not reversed. Now a lot of designers reverse the pattern, which is awesome, but this pattern I suspected was not reversed, so I made sure that you stitch it backwards. So I taped the pattern, just put two little pieces of corners just to hold it in place upside down. 
so that all the letters are backwards because when I trace them onto my fusible, you'll see all the letters are backwards. Hope you can see that. I use two different types of fusible now. I still have soft fuse left and here it is worth its weight in gold and I also tried flexi fuse which I also like. Um, this All of this fusible stuff uh, you don't want to buy it on a bulk roll as much unless that's all you have an option to do because it does degrade over time so I keep my whatever container my um, fusible came in I always put it back into the holder so this is in a plastic wrap and it is works as good as the day I did it so I and I save all the little pieces so this is a chunk that I saved in a box, a plastic box, with all the other little chunks because sometimes all you need is a little piece and you don't want to waste your money. So this piece was good enough. I traced all the letters. Let's see if I can get that closer. Um, go this way. So I traced all of those letters there, and then the next step will be to fuse this onto wool. And um, this wool came in the kit, and I'm frugal about my wool also. So I'm going to put it up in this corner because even though it came in the kit, I have this whole big piece left over for some other project. In fact, no, I can't quite make it that way. Oh, you know what, though? I am, I'm going to be frugal. One has to be. So can I, can I get this to fit in that little square? And these are Karen Buckley scissors, and they are awesome. Okay, so now, let's see what can be done here. like a little bit of a, a Jenga puzzle because because I'm cheap and I want to save as much of this wool as I can so let's see So then I take this over to the ironing board, and I'm going to stop this and take you over there, so hang on. So I've moved my wool and my uh, soft fuse, arranged it on the background, and now I'm going to just press, and I'm going to just go down. I'm not going to do a lot of ironing but just go down initially. So once I get that down, I'm just going to cut that chunk off. And you see, this white wool came in that kit, and look at how much I have left of it. It's awesome. 
So I, I tend to be pretty frugal because I can then maybe make two pillows. But now that I've got this fused here, I'm going to go ahead and iron it from the back and I'm going to give it a little steam. Yeah, it says on a lot of these products don't use steam. I have used a little bit of steam ever since I started. And there you go. So now I'm just going to cut these out and attach them to the background. Okay, so now I'm on to the next step. And what I want to share with you is purely the way I do it. It's not set in any rule. It's not even what the instructions, if you get a wool pattern instruction, you won't... Um, get these instructions. These are. This is how I do it. And I've been doing this for a number of years. It works for me because I'm kind of on the go a lot. So I bought this piece of red wool. Isn't it gorgeous? You can see the plaid that's on it that shows up at this angle. There we go. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> wool, as you can see, is kind of stretchy and I travel a lot with my stitching so I put a pellon fused onto the back so I cut out a piece of pellon this is a SF 101 and it and I just iron to the back I steam it from the front and the back and that just keeps the edge of the wool from stretching as I'm stitching it. And I'm kind of like I'm frugal about everything. I'm frugal about my wool. And so out of the two pieces, out of this piece came out of the kit, I still have this big chunk left. And then the piece of red wool that I bought um, at the expo, I still have a nice big chunk left there. So uh, this can be for a future project. So I've cut out all of my letter pieces and I'm going to just arrange them. And I don't um, I don't spend a lot of time trying to make it perfect. I don't want perfection. I want contentment. That's my word for the year. So I'm going to peel, I've peeled off all the backing, and this says July 4th. And I'm going to just re, just arrange this any way I feel like it. Any way that is appealing to me. Let's see. Where is my F O? U R T H and I kind of like them I kind of like them like a party like everybody's had a different drink and they're standing up a different way okay now I'm missing my L so let's see where did I not cut it out? Let's see. Hold on a second. Stop the presses. I think I forgot to draw the L. Hold on. Okay, I dropped my L. So I'm going to move it a little bit over this way so you can see. So I've arranged them. I haven't fused them down. I peeled all the paper off. I've got my pellon on the back of my wool. And as far as arranging letters, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to look exactly. It just has to please you. So here we go. I got my steam on. I'm holding down, pressing down on my iron <laughs> because um, that, that uh, is an aerobic workout. You know, so this is part of your workout for the day. And I use steam, again, 
even though it says don't use steam, I tend to use steam and it's never failed me in all these years. Now you see how it holds on there? Now I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to steam it from the back. And I have never ever lost a piece of wool as I've traveled by doing this method. And I'm waiting for some, uh, I think they'll, in the craft stores there'll be some amazing and fun buttons to add to it. So, there we go. I've done, I've done my July 4th. So this is the pattern for that. And there was some discussion um, by uh, friends who live in friends who live in different locations on how to adapt this. Now the children are fairly nondescript. You can't tell what country they're from. They're just kids marching along on a parade. So how you could adjust this is really by the colors you choose. So, you know, uh, depending on what the predominant color of your flag you can choose that as the background and this would just work for whatever is your celebration for your country. I think this is a very adaptable pattern except for the July 4th. You'd have to cut out letters that um, signify when you celebrate. Well that's it. Now I'm all ready for the stitching part. Uh, this particular pillow will only take one color of thread, which is great. And I will have this all stitched down at retreat. And then when I come back, I'll make it into a pillow. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. Be sure to keep watching. Keep watching because now we will have the um, video of the expo and the quilts that I saw there some of the quilts that I saw there. Otherwise, you know I love you guys. Have an awesome day, week, and month. Well, here I am at the Portland Expo Center for the Quilt and Craft Show, and I'm gonna just walk around and share it with y'all.